Hi, year 12. Here's our second lesson for the topic of mathematical induction. In this lesson, we're going to look at the series type of questions. Last lesson, we looked at what is proof, the method of proof, and the two types of proof, direct and indirect proof. And then we did an introduction to mathematical induction. So recall, the process of mathematical induction is as follows. We need to show that the statement is true for n equals 1, or some initial value. Then we assume that it's true for an arbitrary value, k. Given that assumption, we then prove that it is true for n equals k plus 1. And then, since it is true for n equals 1 and proven true for n equals 1 plus 1 equals 2 and so on, it must be true for all n. Here's our first example. Use mathematical induction to prove that 1 plus 4 plus 7 plus dot 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 plus 3n minus 2 is equal to n over 2 multiplied by 3n minus 1 in brackets for all positive integers n. Now let's just have a look at this for a second. This is an arithmetic series, isn't it? The first term is 1, the common difference is 3. This is the nth term, 3n minus 2, and this is the sum of n terms. So let's start by showing that this statement is true for n equals 1. So our first term is 1. We can either just see it first in the series here, or we can substitute 1 into here. And the sum of the first term, putting 1 in here and here, I get a half multiplied by 3 minus 1, which is equal to 1. Now it's really important that you show you're working out. This step is worth one mark. If you just say first term is equal to 1, the sum of the first term is equal to 1, you're not going to get that mark. So make sure you show this. But it is true, isn't it? So therefore it is true for n is equal to 1. Now step 2 is to assume that it's true for n equals k. Now we could write out all of this and just put k here and here and here. Or we could use this notation. The sum of the first k terms must be equal to k over 2 multiplied by 3k minus 1. Step three, prove true for n equals k plus one. Now I'm going to start with a required to prove statement so I know where I'm heading. So the sum of k plus one terms is going to be equal to k plus one over two, three times k plus one take away one. And I'm going to take the time to tidy this up. So this is where I'm headed. So up here I have the original series and the sum of n terms. And here's my required to prove statement. Now here's the thing. The sum of the first k plus 1 terms must be equal to the sum of the first k terms plus the k plus first term. Does that make sense to you? And we know this. This is our assumption. We're assuming that the sum of the first k terms is equal to k over 2 in brackets 3k minus 1. The k plus first term I get by putting k plus 1 in the nth term formula like this. Okay, pause for a second and make sure that makes sense to you. Now my job is to get from here to here. I can see a common denominator of 2. This part here has a 2 on the denominator, but this doesn't. So let's make that. I'm going to put 2 on the bottom, and then I'll need to adjust that and put 2 on the top. So I've multiplied that term by 2 over 2, which is the same as multiplying by 1. I haven't changed anything. OK, let's tidy that up. I've got k brackets 3k minus 1 brackets plus 2 bracket 3k plus 1 bracket. Now expanding through that numerator, I get 3k squared take k plus 6k plus 2, and then all over 2. So I'm really close. Look, this is where I am. This is where I want to get to. So let's tidy up these middle terms and factorize. And look, they're the same. So I have proven it. The statement is true for n equals k plus 1. So therefore, by mathematical induction, the statement must be true for all n. Example 2. By the process of mathematical induction, prove that for n is greater than or equal to 1, 1 over 1 times 3 plus 1 over 3 times 5 plus 1 over 5 times 7 plus dot 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 plus 1 over 2n minus 1 in brackets 2n plus 1 in brackets is equal to 
n over 2n plus 1. So again, we have a series, but this one is neither arithmetic nor geometric. Doesn't matter though. Here's our nth term, and here's our sum to n terms. Step one, show true for n equals 1. So the first term is equal to 1 over 1 times 3, which is a third. And the sum of the first term, so having a look here at the right-hand side, just substituting 1 in, I get 1 over 2 plus 1, which is also a third. Therefore, it is true for n equals 1. Now let's assume that it's true for n equals k. And again, I'm going to use that s of k notation rather than writing all of this out. So sum to k terms must be k over 2k plus 1. Now let's prove it true for n equals k plus 1. So up here we have our original series with our nth term and our sum of n terms. And again, I'm going to start with a required to prove statement. So the sum of k plus 1 terms must be equal to k plus 1 over 2 brackets k plus 1 plus 1 or k plus 1 over 2k plus 3. Again, I'm going to use this. The sum of k plus 1 terms must be equal to the sum of k terms plus the k plus first term. And this is our assumption. The sum of k terms is k over 2k plus 1. The k plus first term will be what I get when I put k plus 1 in here and in here. Now I've done this rather quickly. Let's see where this came from here. If I put k plus 1 in there, I get 2 times k plus 1 take away 1, which is 2k plus 1. And put k plus 1 in here, I get 2 times k plus 1 plus 1, which is 2k plus 3. Okay, how do I get from here to here? I can see the 2k plus 3 here. I need one of those here. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 2k plus 3, just like we did in the last example, actually. Now tidying that up, I have k outside of 2k plus 3 plus 1 all over 2k plus 1 in brackets and 2k plus 3 in brackets. Let's expand that numerator. We get 2k squared plus 3k plus 1. Now, I'm going to do something sneaky here. Have a look. This is where I'm wanting to get to. I'm wanting 2k plus 1 to cancel out. I know this is going to factorise. This is giving me a hint as to what one of the brackets is going to be. So it's actually 2k plus 1, k plus 1 factorised, because you can see that there as well. These two cancel out, and so I'm left with k plus 1 over 2k plus 3. So it's true for n equals k plus 1. Therefore, it is true for all n. Here's example 3. Prove that the sum from r equals 1 to n of r over r plus 1 factorial is equal to 1 take away 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Now this is exactly the same, it's just different notation. We've used sigma notation. So instead of writing out the first term, then the second, then the third, dot, 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 then the nth term, using sigma notation is a little bit more concise. So let's start the same way. We'll prove it true for n equals 1. Now this time, to get the first term, I'm going to have to substitute 1 in here. So first term is 1 over 2 factorial, which is a half. But the sum of the first term, just substituting in here, I get 1 take away 1 over 2 factorial. 1 take away a half is a half. Therefore, it is true for n equals 1. Now let's assume it's true for n equals k. In other words, the sum of k terms is equal to 1 take away 1 over k plus 1 factorial. Now let's prove it true for n equals k plus 1. In other words, that the sum of k plus 1 terms is equal to 1 take away 1 over k plus 1 plus 1 factorial, which is k plus 2 factorial. So the sum of k plus 1 terms is equal to the sum of k terms plus the k plus first term. The sum of k terms, that's what we did in the previous step with the assumption, and the k plus first term, that comes from substituting in k plus 1 wherever r is here. Now, how are we going to get from here to here? I can see the 1 minus. Can you see that? And this minus is going to cause me some grief. So I'm going to factorise it out of these two terms like this. And that means I can just work inside these brackets to try and turn this 
into 1 over k plus 2 factorial. Does that make sense? So I can see the k plus 2 factorial here, but I don't have that here. But here's the thing, k plus 2 factorial is equal to k plus 2 multiplied by k plus 1 factorial. So to turn this into k plus 2 factorial, I just need to multiply it by k plus 2. So let's multiply top and bottom by k plus 2. So times in this one by k plus 2 and this by k plus 2. Now let's rewrite it. And you can see how I have managed to make a k plus 2 factorial on the denominator. So collecting these two together, I get k plus 2 take away k minus 1. And tidying that up, that's equal to 1. And so we've done it. Can you see? So it is true for n is equal to k plus 1. Therefore, it is true for all n. OK, here's our last example. By using mathematical induction, prove that the sum from r equals 1 to n of r times 3 to the r is equal to 3 quarters outside of 3 to the power of n times 2n minus 1 in brackets plus 1. OK, step 1. Prove it's true for n equals 1. The first term is equal to 1 times 3 to the power of 1, which is 3. The sum of the first term, let's substitute 1 in here, I get 3 quarters times 3 times 2 minus 1 plus 1. This is equal to 4, so it's 3 quarters times 4, which is equal to 3. Therefore, it is true for n equals 1. Now I'm going to assume it's true for n equals k. In other words, that the sum of k terms is equal to 3 quarters times 3 to the k, in brackets 2k minus 1 plus 1. Now let's prove it true for n is equal to k plus 1. Here's our required to prove statement that the sum of k plus 1 terms is equal to 3 quarters, 3 to the k plus 1. In here I have 2 and then brackets k plus 1, take away 1, that's the same as 2k plus 1, plus 1. So the sum of k plus 1 terms is equal to the sum of k terms plus the k plus first term. And in this case, here is our sum of k terms, that's our assumption, and this is our k plus first term. Right, how do we get from here up to here? I can see a three quarters sitting out the front and I have that here, but I don't have it here, so I need to make it. So I'm going to multiply that last term by three quarters. But of course I can't just do that, can I? I've changed the question, so I need to adjust it. I'm going to then multiply it by four thirds because three quarters times four thirds is one. And now I have the three quarters that I need. So let's factorise that out. I have 3 quarters multiplied by 3 to the k times 2k minus 1 in brackets plus 1 plus 4 thirds times k plus 1 in brackets times 3 to the k plus 1. All right, how do we get from here into here? I can see this plus 1 here, which I have. I'm going to move that to the end. But I can see a 4 thirds here, and I do not want a 3 on the denominator, so I need to get rid of this. And this is how I'm going to do it. You see this 3 to the k plus 1? Well, that is equal to 3 to the k multiplied by 3. And that will cancel out that 3 with the 3 on the denominator. All right, let's rewrite it. We have 3 quarters outside of 3 to the k multiplied by 2k minus 1 plus 4 outside of k plus 1 times 3 to the k plus 1. You can see how I have moved that plus 1 to the end. All right, what now? We have a common factor of 3 to the k. Can you see? Let's bring that out the front. And inside the brackets, we'll have 2k minus 1 plus 4k plus 4. And tidying up in here, I get 6k plus 3, which I can factorise. Common factor of 3. Let's bring that out the front. And let's join this back together. This is 3 to the k plus 1. And look, we've done it. So it is true for n equals k plus 1. Therefore, it is true for all n. Okay, that's it for this lesson. In our next lesson, we're going to look at the divisibility type of mathematical induction questions.